Ryan, What's thank up? you so much for giving us a little time on a busy sure. day for you. So PMG has obviously made big news with their foray into Fort Lauderdale. So sure. can you tell us a little bit about the project that you're planning, what you can tell us to this point, and, sure. and also why this decision to go into Fort Lauderdale when you've done so much in, in Miami, New York, and other markets? Um, just like Fort Lauderdale in general. Just think it's a, uh, it's not a secret anymore, but I'm born and raised in Miami, so when I grew up, used to go out at Riverfront. Uh, it was the only place to use your fake ID because South Beach was kind of tough. <laughs> so um, it was, uh, Fort Lauderdale was always kind of like a little gem, and the metrics of Fort Lauderdale are just great, like from an institutional standpoint, like with the train and the population growth and job growth. Um, a lot of people think Miami's overbuilt. I, you know, you can't ignore that it is somewhat overbuilt. Um, it's definitely more crowded in terms of space. So Riverfront for me is like A++, like that's center of the world for where we want to build a multi in Fort Lauderdale. Um, deal was available, uh, kind of new dev through his brother Nitin. Um, it just kind of worked. So uh, we think we're going to create like a little world back there, like Riverfront 2. That's not the name. We don't have a name actually because every time inside the shop, coming up with building names is like just a exhaustive, fruitless exercise. Uh, <laughs> we will get a name eventually. Um, but that was it. We just, good deal, good time, good seller. Uh, and um, we just we just like the piece. We think it's going to be a, a teed up for like a nice, very nice multi long term play. Um, Kids, just so you know, the fake ID thing is not as easy these days. I just want to throw that to It is, and I'll tell you why. Because they changed the IDs in Florida. Now holograms are back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have holograms, so you'd be able to, I mean, that's a whole different conversation. That's a whole different, yeah. conversation, a whole different conversation for another event. Yes. Um, so you, you made a great point that I want to just expand on a little sure. bit about how Fort Lauderdale is really diversified in terms of the type of investment activity we're seeing here. For decades and throughout its history, Fort Lauderdale was kind of a local sandbox sure. where you had to be from Fort Lauderdale, know all the players. Sure to be successful here, sure. to be able to, to successfully invest and develop. Sure. It's, it, talk about how that's changed now, how sure. it's really a, a global marketplace. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's some, some people think, or maybe it was like kind of good old boys, you know, 20, 30 years ago here, it's more of a small town than a city. Um, but Fort Lauderdale's a massive city. You know, I, I don't think people realize how global Fort Lauderdale is. I mean, it just like, give you the exhaustive lifts from the port to, you know, just look at, why do they put a train stop in Fort Lauderdale? You know, that was a multi-billion dollar investment by SoftBank and Fortress. So it's, it's, it's no longer a secret. I mean, look at what they're selling on the beach right now. They're selling, you know, north of a thousand a foot. And if you told me like, hey Ryan, we're selling over a thousand a foot in Fort Lauderdale five years ago, I'd be like, that's, that's just not true. That's, you're just making not that possible. up. Not possible. But it's real. I mean, it's, it's, Fort Lauderdale is definitely here. Um, and I really like the bones. And it's just not me. Like a lot of people like the bones of Fort Lauderdale, where Miami is, I mean, I'm born and raised. I will be a Miami guy until, until the grave. But uh, I think there's just a ton of opportunity for Lardell. So um, it, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, so you're taking the time to be here at Biz now yep. and speak publicly about Fort Lauderdale, what you're doing. What's the biggest message that you want to get across to the audience and, sure. and anyone who's going to tune into this later on? Um, I guess the biggest message in terms of real estate and like, I, you know, are you looking for a life message or are you looking for a real estate? It can be whatever, 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 whatever the whatever biggest takeaway you want people to, uh, to um, leave. Um, I would say that, you know, everybody, everybody is down on Miami, just in general. Like, all you have to do is pick up the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, you know, everybody's, the real estate world right now, because we're all over the country, is like, it's just generally in a weird spot. Like, New York's mm -hmm. in a weird spot and, you know, a lot of other major cities. But I just think Miami's been like the underdog for a long time. Um, I think there's a plethora of wealth and we go as South America goes. So you can't just like box Miami into, oh, you know, this is the markets and this is where I peg it and this is where rents are underwriting. Like if you live in Miami and you're born and raised here, you, you understand who's going to be the next president of Mexico and how that directly correlates to how your condo sales are going to trade or rental rates. And like you need to be in that world and not just, you know, get a quarterly report on where national rents are trading. So I'd say that, you know, just be a believer um, you know obviously think long term think long term yeah I mean, short term our, our biggest issue is water it's gonna be water rising the solution to that uh, I know Mayor Levine did a bunch of stuff to help um, don't have a solution and uh, I think that's gonna be our biggest our biggest item to tackle but you know we're fortunate that there's just so much wealth down here that uh, 
I just think that while we don't have a solution today, there eventually will be one. So, And the fact that the development community, like yourself, you recognize that as the biggest issue, not just the public 100%, sector. 100%. Yeah, 100%. That is a very long, it's not an issue today, but it's, a, it's great that we're forecasting for decades and decades out. Um, and I just, I think we just need to plan for it. I just, you know, all, you know that Rolling Stones article came out a couple years ago, right? And it was like, Miami's dead forever. And I just don't believe that to be true. Uh, another paradise lost type. Yeah, of. another paradise lost. I just think that you just gotta be smart and it's gonna definitely burden some, you know, some of the residents and you know, they'll probably introduce a tax at some point and so forth. Um, but it's great we're having the conversation now because it's not a now problem, it's a, 30 years from now problem or right. 50 years from now problem that we should be starting to force, you know, address today. So other than that, which I do think will be solved, uh, just keep fighting the fight for Miami. It's, uh, it's a very, it is South America's largest capital. Excellent. Ryan, fantastic stuff, man. You got it. We, we covered a lot.